<laughs> okay. Um, well, I've actually been very, very, very busy this year. I've already had uh, two shows, one in Atlanta and um, another one in Phoenix. The one in Atlanta was called Three Billion, and it was about the fact that we've lost a third of all birds in uh, the Northern Hemisphere, actually the North America uh, in 50 years. And uh, the Audubon people are trying to uh, do all sorts of activities, including have exhibitions about that. So I was in a big group show that was amazing. And I went out there to see it. It was a little art museum outside of Atlanta. That was fabulous. Um, and then I went, I had a show with my young assistant uh, in Phoenix because uh, we did this very cool thing where we, um, you, you can use public access telescopes. You can pay a little bit of money and book a telescope on the other side of the world, decide what object you want to point it at, decide what telescope you want to use out of a whole shed full of them and make a picture. And there's a little bit of learning involved in this, but we got the most amazing, I forgot to put this in my slideshow, damn it, but we got the most amazing deep sky images and um, we kind of learned a lot about uh, astrophotography. We had a show of that work. Well, they weren't they weren't kind of glossy magazine type images. I mean, they were of distant, very distant galaxies and nebula and all sorts of things. But we made them kind of arty and and um, and monochrom monochromatic and had a show of those. And I had a wall that was called 50 Little Pictures of Big Clouds." Again, I'm not going to show you that work. I'd rather show you the brand new work. But since then, I've um, I've put a show up in Austin, Texas at the Stephen L. Clark Gallery um, called uh, Dark Dreams. And I'm gonna show you that work in a minute. And I've got a show that I just sent work off to in Abilene, Texas, which is a little town uh, about I don't know, an hour or so, I think, I don't know where it is, it's somewhere in, in the middle of Texas, um, uh, near Dallas, Fort Worth. But I'm going out there actually for that opening and there's 131 pieces in that show. So I've been extremely busy. And um, I'm, I think that's about it. I've got, I've done a live workshop, which was a nice change. I do like the online thing, but the live one is a whole different ball game. And I had 13 very eager, creative people um, coloring their photographs in Johnson City. So that's what I've been doing. So I will show you now, so some of the work um, and, let me get here. Oops, that's the wrong thing. Where is it gone? There it is. Share. And then I'll do, okay. Um, I hope I can advance this. This is the, the show in, in uh, the Stephen L. Clark Gallery. Everyone can see that? Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, and it kind of got loosely based around the fact that this guy who's a rancher friend of mine, who's always giving me wonderful, wonderful dead animals because he knows that's what I do. And he gave me this great big, beautiful, glossy black common raven. And I kind of fell in love with it and I started photographing it and I photographed it for you know two days in the end. It's still in my freezer because I, I can't stand uh, to let it go. Why can't I advance this? Why is it not advancing? Just click on it using Sorry. your, yeah. yeah. Ah, there we go. So yeah, I photographed it. Um, this is already in its frame, so it's a bit not, not great quality, but I photographed it uh, down on some lace. And um, anyway, I did lots of pictures of this bird. And um, and then I started thinking how many images I had that were, it was all, it sort of harked back to the whole, the bird thing I'd done in Atlanta, but I had all these images of, of ravens. And um, and then I, I, I sort of quickly realized that the theme was, was this sort of, well, dark dreams. It was sort of the idea that uh, we've all been through this weird time of um, grief and loss and kind of scary stuff. And so I sort of started pulling out all my my scary dreamlike things and putting them in weird frames. And um, this one's about 12 inches square. This one I've had a long time and I kind of redid. This is uh, taken with a trail camera in Australia of uh, our native black swans, wild black swans. And these are quite big. These are like 24 by 40 something or other. Anyway, and then I keep, I continue to go outside every night that the moon is setting over. This is where I live. This is, there's a big peak right in front of me uh, with Suarez all over it. Um, George remembers because he used to live out here too. And the moon beautifully goes down um, every night at a different place and obviously um, um, a different phase. And I run out and I photograph it. So I've now got a huge collection of moon pictures, which I like very much. So again, I'm just showing you some of this dark dreams work. In fact, there's, 
it's a mixture of work I'm showing you, but um, some of the work is also in the Grace Museum. And you can see this is my old deal where I put pencil uh, and pastel on the image. And of course, that's what I do when I teach workshop. I show everyone how to do this. Um, this is part of Dark Dreams. I thought the mushrooms were kind of otherworldly and beautiful. This is actually, Georgia, I think you were there. This was Italy, one of the times, I think it was the, what, the time that Keith Carter was there. And we all went up the hill and lay on the ground and took mushroom pictures. I think we've all got the same pictures. But I found these the other day. Right, I've been yeah. finding old negatives and and uh, thinking, not negatives. I mean images from from my um, my various travels and th and just doing things with them. It's kind of fun. Oops, why did that? I and then there's an, a little nest from Texas. I got a whole series of nests that I I've just got too many pictures in my life, so I kind of randomly pick pick them to put in shows. I also spent some time last June photographing the Nowise comet. Uh, which won't be back for 7,000 years. So I thought, why not? And um, this was actually at the end of uh, it all. It was already fading and, and not getting the same beautiful pictures as, as I did the first few weeks. But by absolute chance, I got a shooting star in this one, which I thought was a lovely gift. I didn't even, I didn't even see it until I blew them up because it was kind of faint. But this one's in dark dreams too, because it fills... The, uh, it feels like it's part of the strange, um, weird, something or other witchcraft thing going on in our lives at the moment. <laughs> this one's called Queen Anne's Lace. Again, this is me putting textures on and then going back and doing some work with pencils and stuff. It's one of my favorite pictures. I, I take pictures of pumpkins because I like them so much. They kind of remind me of um, bottoms, bums. And then this is, I, I always go out and photograph the, whenever there's an eclipse, a uh, lunar eclipse, I've uh, got a lot of lunar eclipse pictures. This one's in the Dark Dream show. This was a poor little animal that I'd found on the road in Texas when I was there last. It was probably about 20 inches long. It was tiny. It was a tiny, tiny, maybe just a few, few day old fawn and someone had hit it on the road. So of course I couldn't resist. I photographed it because that's what I do is I make memorials to these poor things. Can't stand it. And the one, the show in Abilene is called Journey. And I started, I started the whole show with this image that's kind of a, obviously a, a pretend journey that's not going anywhere because it's in a bottle. Uh, and then it's, a, it's, it's the theme is that the one image leads to the next one around, around the room and they're all different and they're all from different series but they all kind of relate on some weird way this one's called tangled tree i wanted to just call it tangled but disney already did that again this is a huge thing this is like 40 inches by 70 and one of my very atmospheric ones these are all hand colored a little at least a little bit and then i decided the other day um to get all the moths out of my wall sconce that were dead and uh and make a picture and then go back and and do some pencil work on them because I, I just liked the way they look. And it was sort of a very semi, semi scientific thing, but they were all, many of them are different species of moth that I know nothing about. And then I've had this image for a while that I finally broke out. Um, someone gave me this head, it's a javelina. We, they're the native creatures here in the Southwest. And, and it was kind of beautiful. It was frozen at the time. And, um, and I made an image of it because I found it so, I don't know what iconic, um, and uh, I, I have no idea why someone chopped its head off, but um, I think they were wanting to keep the skull, but I've gone back in and done lots and lots of work on the actual hair, hair on its head. And then there's my usual dead flowery things in weird frames. Um, again, these are like 20 inches square, and I've gone back in with pencil and pastel and made them painterly, which as I said, is what I do. In the workshop is show people how how I do this, which is actually relatively simple. There's another one, bad quality. I'm sorry. This is through the glass. And then this brings me back to uh, saying that again, I will show you how to do this if you take my workshop. Uh, it's uh, pretty easy. It's just an image that you ad adjust in Lightroom, Darkroom, and Light um, Photoshop and Lightroom. And then I go back in with some pencils, and then I go back in with some pastel. And so I will show you step by step how to do this and alter your images 